people this is Mike from my gets well and hope you are having an amazing day in today's video we are doing the unboxing setup and looking at what features we have in 2022 QN90B yes it is the Neo QLED mini LED TV from Samsung and I wanted to get it out there the disclaimer that this video is not sponsored by Samsung it is my own purchase 65 inch QN90B and also I have the last year purchase model which is the QN90A in the bedroom and we're going to be comparing this with the last year model and also looking at what we have in this model for 2022. And also I had a video about you know saying a lot of things about Samsung QN90A at launch because there were not 4 HDMI ports and congratulations. The very first thing that I wanted to discuss about the new features, we're gonna get into it. And also I'm gonna be comparing it with the LG OLED Gallery Design TV that I have in the living room and also with the QN90A for sure. So very first feature that they improved from last year, it is actually the 4 HDMI 2.1 ports. Last year I made the video about it, they only gave us one HDMI 2.1 port and that was not even on the ER port. So let's say if you have the HDMI 2.1 receiver, you won't be able to pass the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5 HDMI 2.1 features because the HDMI eARC did not have the 4K 120Hz. But now we have it. So happy Samsung user. Now you got the four 4K 120Hz HDMI 2.1 ports. The second exciting feature is the professional quality screen calibration in minutes. This is kind of similar to what we have seen from Apple doing it with the Apple devices. You have the Apple TV 4K and you hold the phone in front of the screen and it will do the calibration. But in Apple, actually it just adjusted the color temperature, not actually went deep and did the calibration properly. But here we have seven to 12 minutes. So I'm looking forward to it. I have to create the Samsung account in order to do that. So that will be in upcoming video. Make sure to hit the subscribe for the upcoming content. And this is very exciting feature as well. So Samsung is actually listening to us now. So we have the Dolby Atmos built into the TV and now you can use the Dolby Atmos with the TV applications. Last year, if you remember the QN90A models and any other Samsung models, they were lacking this Dolby Atmos support built into the TV. But now we have it right built into the TV. So for example, I went to Netflix and looked up for do not look up even though it says do not look up i still looked up and this is the 2022 model and also with the witcher you can see we have the 4k hdr and we have the dolby atmos well done samsung so now at least you can uh, pass through the atmos through the receiver but this is the qn90a 2021 model in my bedroom so when i go there and try to look up don't look up it says 5.1 and same goes for the witcher it says 5.1 because the applications on the TV in 2021 models did not support the Dolby Atmos. So well done Samsung. So now we have the three dimensional depth enhancer. This is the feature that we have seen in the Sony's XR processing capabilities. And now we have it in the Samsung. It was kind of missing out there. So now I'm hoping the Samsung TV is going to be similar to, you know, how we have the XR, but I'm going to have to compare that with my Sony A90J. So if you have made this far in the video, guys, make sure to give some support to this channel and also subscribe to the channel. It's free. Besides all those new features, guys, the Samsung design is still same as last year's QN90A, and it looks kind of really ditto copy of what it was in body wise last year so there's no significant difference in the uh, actual the tv itself it will look similar but it's just the difference in the processing it has the reduced glare and the reduced distractions this is samsung famous for so it's going to knock down those reflections really good all right so now we're going to talk about what do we have here in the box and i'm going to be doing this setup showing you guys how to properly set up this so there's my technique that i use it always what i do i open the box from the top because there's usually um, remote control uh, stand related stuff and user manual and couple of things there at the top so first you want to do that and open the top all right guys so as soon as you have taken out everything from the top now you can just slide up the box and what i do is actually i put this box the outer shell 
uh, on the ground on the carpet and then I can let the screen lay down flat on it and that's how you can assemble the stand easily and also I let the styrofoam intact the way it is and just slide out the bottom part out and that's where the heaviest part of the TV is the metal bending stand which is gonna be connected I'm gonna show you how to do it throughout this video and how to set up properly this TV is really heavy so in the box we have the TV user manual we have the quick setup guide which will tell you how to unbox the way I'm telling you in this video you have the power cable you have the remote control with little tweaked options that I'm gonna get into it and you have the eight screws which you will use to connect the TV stand this remote control right here is fast so I believe they have tested it before packing it so wonderful because you don't want to open a remote control not working. It's kind of similar to what we had last year from the Samsung. It is incredible remote control because you don't have to put batteries. It is solar charge. So as you can see on the remote control now we have an extra button that's for the Disney Plus. We did not have it last year so in order to remote control usage you have to take out that protective strip. Now that left side remote control is the 2021 QN90A remote control and you can see the difference right off the bat that Disney Plus remote uh, button is added and it was not there last year. And also you can see that the remote control doesn't have that bump anymore so it's really flat looking remote control if you look from these sides before it had a little bump so I believe that is for the Disney Plus application addition additional button that they did so they may have to take out that so before it had solar cell charging logo there now they have only solar which is totally fine as we know that it can be charged really easily when you put it under the sunlight and I have never even have to put it in the sunlight so it all usually charges when the normal sunlight is coming well, this is what we're gonna be doing to set up the TV stand. This metal part first needs to be attached to this plastic part because if you attach the plastic part first, this metal thing is really heavy and you won't be able to hold it. It's gonna be hassle. So you're gonna do first thing first, assemble the plastic part with the metal first. And then when that is done, we're gonna just put that stand on the TV and just use the four screws. So four screws go here when you connect the plastic metal base and this TV weighs 69 pounds with the stand without the stand it is 53 pounds and the stand itself is 15 pounds so you best way is to pick up from the middle it is 65 inch TV not a 55 inch so it is pretty heavy but you can pick it up from the middle it's gonna be easy peasy lemon squeezy good thing is we don't have any you know option that you know there are people start showing that hey take out this take out that to make the tv lighter i mean for god's sake how many times you're going to move your tv around so once it's there in place you don't really have to and there's a science behind it that's why engineers make these stands uh, you know properly with the proper weight so good thing is in neo qled we have the stand which is just the metal bending plate and it is heavy no doubt but you can pick it up and if you need get your help from the friend and pick it up from the sides okay so when the things are here right this uh, like this on the screen it is when you power on the tv 
you're gonna have some connectivity stuff like you have uh, HDMI 2.1 connection, HDMI 2.0 connections, your cable box, your Xbox, PlayStation. You do all that is really simple stuff. I don't know if I have to drag this video and show all of that here. You're gonna connect to your Wi-Fi. All of that stuff is pretty simple. So I'm just gonna skip through that and I'm just excited about going to the home screen and show you guys what Samsung has done. It is so beautiful. Like, um, I really like the way the stuff is now. Well, the system's gonna check for update. For this update stuff, I usually update my TV right away. I'm not one of those conspiracy theorists that the update coming from the Samsung, from the manufacturer, is actually gonna harm the TV or in any way. I don't want any kind of, um, you know, the bad experience from the TV. So there is update, it is, fixing the bugs when it says it's fi fixing some bugs let it fix the bugs and then you get into the tv and have that flawless user experience all right you can see that the tv software has updated and tv restarted itself there is bixby which is by samsung then you have Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. They're the three assistants. You can choose one of those. Uh, if you are a Samsung user, you can use Bixby. It is also in your Samsung Galaxy phones and Samsung Note phones out there. And if you have Android, Google Assistant is the way. And if you have Alexa, use Alexa. They're going to ask you to download the Prime Video or Hulu, whatever the applications. I'm going to do this all later. And then you have this option, which is adaptive picture and adaptive or active voice amplifier, which is adaptive sound plus. So what it does, it actually takes the calibration for your room for acoustics and it adjusts the audio. So if you really want to do it, you can enable it. It's going to take some measurements for the audio and for the picture, it is going to adjust according to bright and dark room. I personally don't use it, so I'm gonna just do it later. Just click on later, it's not gonna apply. But if you enable now, it's gonna change the TV picture settings depending on what kind of, you know, the environment you are. You're in bright, it's gonna adjust. You're gonna go in dark room, it's gonna adjust according to that. But this is something, cause I'm doing voice over. When I saw this menu, I was like, this is mind blowing. So the way the new animation, it was not there before. It is for the Samsung smart things. And then you have this beautiful, um, you know, the home screen. With the Samsung, we did not have something like this before. So this new tweak user experience, I'm kind of liking it. It's kind of gi giving me similar feel to what we have on the LG Web OS, the way it is now. But I feel like it is kind of faster than the LG Web OS because the way the things are loading, it is actually for the first time and it has loaded everything. So when I go from, you know, watching something back to the home screen, everything just shows as loaded, not just trying to load when I'm on the home screen. So the app store has a lot of apps. You have every major, you know, application that you want to watch videos on or listen to music is available. You have Apple TV, only Apple TV. One thing they did from the Android, they pulled the rental feature because Apple doesn't want that monetary stuff to be used outside the Apple network. But here we have the amazing demo guys. Make sure to enjoy this because this is what I want you to guys see how beautiful it looks. First of all, for the viewing angle. So if you go on the far, you know, the right angle and you see from literally from the sides and the TV still is viewable. So the viewing angles are incredible on this TV. Also the thinness of this TV, it is actually thinner than my LG OLED G1, which is the gallery design and it's placed on the wall. So it looks incredible on the wall. You can go with a slim mount and you will have that flush to the wall kind of uh, experience if you're trying to get the gallery design kind of look out of the um, Samsung TV. I'll put the link in the description for that stand if you're really, not a stand, actually it's the mounting kit. So if you're trying to mount it on the wall, you're gonna have that. So for the user experience, the apps are running is smooth uh, and um, I'm gonna be playing some demo in the end of the video. Make sure you guys go and check that out. Now let's look at the setting side, what we have here. So everything, as I told you guys, the user experience is pretty smooth. Now for the settings, we have connecting devices, the multi-view, because on Samsung TVs, you can actually watch two sources at the same time. 
So that is something that I'm going to include in the features or, you know, tips and tricks video for the Samsung because there's so many features that you can explore. But in the settings, if you go, there's all settings, there's support where you can update your TV software, you have Wi-Fi connectivity, you have the intelligent mode, which I switched off because intelligent mode is going to switch the picture mode. So uh, depending on what kind of lighting you have and all that stuff. So Vivid is standard movie filmmaker. These are the picture modes you have available. There's game mode available also. But for that, you have to be connected with the gaming console. And there is sound setup and Bluetooth input device management all of this stuff is pretty similar to what we had uh, from the last year samsung qn 90a for the power saving and energy i go and turn off the auto power saving option because it's going to limit the brightness and does a whole sort of like finicky things in the background so it's always recommended to turn off the auto power saving so that you don't have any dimming going on all the time on the screen when you're watching the content all right, so settings are pretty basic. I'm gonna go into the all settings and show you guys what we have in the picture mode, which is totally similar to how we have in the QN90A and other Samsung TV models from last year. It hasn't changed, but we have the dynamic picture mode. We have the standard movie and filmmaker. Whole sort of the other features are there. We have the uh, local dimming, which is the high standard and low. But one thing which is really interesting that I'm going to be experiencing and uh, sharing with you guys, it is actually the calibration. So which is built into the picture settings. And when you do that, you have to have the Samsung Smart Things account set up. And also you need a Samsung device or iPhone. I believe you have to download the application. So I'm going to be getting into that. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and like this video so it can go to more people. And I'll have the demos in the end of the video so you can enjoy that. And I'll see you guys in another video. If there's anything that you want me to explore and share with you guys to make sure leave that in the comment section and also give me ideas like what you are actually uh, interested in so I can work on that content rather, you know, just showing what I want to show. I want to show you guys what you actually want to see. So that's all I have from this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. And now enjoy the demo and I'll see you guys in another video. Until then.